Right, yeah. well, we're going to start this episode off a little bit different than normal. Um, we you new people to the channel, welcome. So, what we've got sitting just to the side of me here, you'll see at the end of the episode, but it is something that I am pretty proud of. Like a pretty computer illiterate person, I consider myself. And, uh, yeah, I spent two months learning, watching tutorials on Fusion to design the chassis, had it all cut out, and now it's sitting there, it's a physical thing. Which is pretty exciting. Um, in the episode, I'll skip forward and jump a fair bit, uh, sort of try to get through it as quick as possible. I had 22 days in total just making this main part of the frame. The old Metro is one step closer to being a rolling, running thing. So, yeah, get into it. G'day, Nick here, Animal Engineering. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's a pretty big one, this one. It's been months and months and months and months in the making. But on this pallet, I have all the pieces for the chassis for the van. And it has actually been signed off by the engineer now as well. Which is awesome, because I just backed myself and sent it out to get cut. But it has been signed off. Which is pretty awesome. So, we'll get it all unpacked and I'm going to just lay it all out on the floor. Uh, work out what pieces are where and try and make some sense of this puzzle. So we'll get it all laid out on the floor and then we'll have a look at it. Right, yeah, well, there you have it. Not gonna lie, it is pretty intimidating. So I have to go through on the computer and try and work out exactly what parts go where. So yeah, when I split it up on the computer, I tried to make it so every join was uh, slightly different, just a different orientation of the holes and the way that they're going to line up, just so that when I go to put it together, it should, in theory, make it a bit easier to work out what piece goes where and what orientation around it goes. And also when I'm on the computer looking, I can find the piece and let's sort of passenger side, that's for the driver's side. So in theory it should hopefully make it go a bit easier. So now it's just a matter of trying to get what's on the computer into real life and working out how to bend this all up. Well I have just spent a fair amount of time on the computer going backwards and forwards between the DXF files I created back to the model trying to work out where all the different pieces go. And this pile So that pole there all needs to get bent and folded and shaped and that all creates a 3D piece to the back of the chassis. Now, seeing it all sitting there is pretty scary. Oh, on a side note, started making a few rivets which is pretty good. But anyway, I'm going to have a bit more of a think about this and work out the best method of what pieces to start bending. So now I've got them all orientated in that pile, I can now work out how to start bending it. Which, you know, that's eighth of an inch, so... Not the easiest stuff to bend. It's definitely going to be one of the hardest things I've ever made. But designing it was very challenging as well, so why should fabricating it be any different? So, nothing to do it but to do it, so we'll get stuck in. Rightio, well I have the first pieces on the table, you can kind of see the inner diff cradle centre section there. So, you might be able to see a bit easier now. Sort of all my little locating bits for each piece to make sure they go and interlink. Uh, when I done it up on the computer, I think I allowed I think it was 0.2 of a mil. Uh, so basically, I just took a 0.2 sliver out of the drawing, and then basically they fit together. They fit together really, really well. So that should help locate everything and keep it square. I'll do a few measurements, diagonal checks, and that as I'm going. But basically, I've got a couple of squares or clamps. 
So I'll take a few clamps around the show just to hold it in place. First thing I'll go and join those two bottom pieces together, uh, weld them up, and then we'll start looking at doing. And then we'll start looking at doing this piece. So I've made myself up this little uh, little bending jig thing. Maybe if I get that over the plate and just sort of bend it around, I'll sort of work around, tack it, bend it around, let it go, let it relax and make sure that it's just getting its nice curve and try and cold form it as much as I possibly can uh, just so there's no tension, you know, like you just bend it around and tack and bend and tack and bend and tack and it's going to be under a bit of tension so when you go to weld it I feel it probably will warp so as much as possible I'm going to try and cold shape it to the right shape before I actually tack it so we will get stuck in Alright, well that's all the vertical pieces for the rear section, the diff area of the chassis uh, bend up and tacked into place. So now we'll just go through and do the top skin, bend and shape all that. Got this first bit on there, we'll quickly go through and get that tacked on, but I must say I look pretty stoked with how it's coming up. It's looking basically exactly like it did on the computer, which I guess shouldn't be a surprise. So yeah, we'll just go around with some clamps and tweak it here and there and we'll get it all tacked up so it fit up nice and good for welding and then we'll move forward. Well, fast forward quite a few days later, um, well, we had a mix up and lost a lot of footage. Just been a bit of a fool on a computer, just deleted stuff. That, anyway, so jump forward a bit here now from what you just seen. Uh, we now have all the internal pockets done, they were a mission. Uh, the old plate roller thing there is just not up to speed uh, with broken teeth off it and <laughs> yeah it's only made for doing one mil so I've been sort of going backwards and forwards on the brake uh, just bending a little bit on that and then basically just hammer forming it so it took a while it was like a bit over a day per one of them but you can see now I've got that jig picks up on the top bolts for the rear control arms and on the computer I sort of plotted that from the scan of the subframe and then I've just welded some nuts on the back. So now it's time to bend all these into shape and that's the last top pieces for the rear part of the chassis. I finished up yesterday, just spent a couple of hours just getting the frame square to the table, centred on the table and basically just making sure everything's square so that this jig that I made up off the subframe is perfectly square and where it needs to be in relation to the chassis. And it's worked out pretty good really to be honest. Um, it's definitely glad that I made the jig first. Uh, you know, things move around a little bit and I can't really just trust making it on the computer and then hand forming and bending all this stuff and expecting it to be in the right place. So at least having the jig there, I know it's going to be correct. So yeah, it's, um, it's all coming together very good.
Paranoia, paranoia, paranoia is coming to get ya. Well, I have been shaping this piece up and it's looking really good. It's all fitting nice and neat. Uh, it does not match up with the jig, like to the hole. Now, when I was designing it on the computer, I did have concerns that when it came to actually making it in real life, it wouldn't be the same, but I figured I'd give it a go. So what I've done is I've plugged up the hole and I've welded a big block on the back. So we've got half, half an inch thickness there now that we can go and drill and tap it. Um, another concern of doing it now with the jig also is once it's all fully welded, there is a potential that it can move and tweak a little bit, so then those holes will be out as well. So I think my little bit of paranoia is justified. So I've got it all shaped, bent, it's looking nice and good and it fits pretty good. So now we'll go through, tack it all on, and we'll move forward with the rest. And then once it's fully welded, I've already got the jig set up on the table, so I'll take a couple of photos and measurements of that. So once it's fully welded, we can set it back up exactly how it is now, put that jig on and drill and tap. So yeah, we'll get cracking and get this tacked on. Right, well that probably took about 25 minutes or so. Um, it's fitting really good, it's nice and everything's flowing. But yeah, pretty happy with that. <coughs> so yeah, now we'll just go through, do the exact same thing on the other side and then it's the two centre pieces. And then that's pretty much the most complicated part of the whole chassis done. Which is pretty awesome. So I reckon probably another Today and tomorrow I should have the back half of the chassis tacked together and then the rest of it's sort of the footage I lost of doing this piece um, which is using that bending fork goes a lot faster. So we'll get the other side done. Alrighty, well that is the other side done as well. Um, that turned out a lot nicer than the first side. Um, I mean, you can quite see the shiny bit here. Um, I end up cutting that out. Uh, sort of concave the boat in, it wasn't really flowing nice. So, if you've made it this far into the video, here's a little tip for you. If you're making something and you're thinking in your head that it's not quite good enough, it is not. So, that only took 10 15 minutes just to chop that out, reshape it, and weld it back in, and it's so much better than it was. So, now the next bit on the agenda is these pieces here, so they go up over, probably all the shape of that, so same thing, fair bit of bending, to get all that to line up, so we we'll get stuck into them, I must say, once you get these the top pieces on and it actually boxes it in, it's coming together really good. We've come to the end of another day on the old chassis. We made some pretty good progress today, got all these top pieces done and I must say I am pretty stoked with how it's coming up. Very, very happy with that. So it's going to get a pretty good really. I'm just making sure when I put the pieces together they're sort of edge for edge right on the corner. Um, as much as possible and it's making it all line up really good because that's how it was designed on the computer so I figured go off the bottom one make sure it's edge to edge and then uh, square up and it's, it's matching up really nice. So 
So, probably a good thing that I lost a lot of footage because this is going to be probably a three or four weeks trying to condense into like a 20 minute video. But we'll kick into a super hyper time lapsey job and I'll smash out the middle bit and you'll be able to see basically what you missed on the rear end using the little forky tool thing that I made. Very happy so far. Alright, well, I'll just turn around to the camera to see how long that took so I could tell you how long that time lapse was, but I'm not having, <laughs> I'm not having much luck at all with, with the filming and cameraing situation on this episode. Um, I don't know why this Sony camera, it'll be recording and it just turns off. I don't know why it just turns off. But anyway, I think that took about an hour, maybe just over an hour. Um, should have seen enough footage there to see that basically I'm just using that little fork thing I made, just tweaking it a little bit, bringing it around until it gets to the edge, stop, put a little tack, bend a bit more, tack, tack, and... There, as it came around and matched up with those two uh, tab brackets, perfect, and then the join as well, that's probably one of the nicer ones I've actually had, bending it up. So yeah, we'll cut back in, well, at some stage. I'm just going to keep smashing on through this, and um, yeah, we'll see you back in a second. Audio, well, I've been jamming away for another couple of days, uh, and we're making some pretty good progress. Yesterday, we got all six of these front pockets done, and this outer edge here, which is all looking pretty good. Um, I don't know if you can see... I don't know if those sort of lines are showing up there, but I sort of changed my method. Uh, I've actually been sort of marking it and taking it over to the pan brake and just bumping it on that and getting some bends. It has been coming out a lot squarer and uh, a lot nicer. It's easier, like a lot easier to put together rather than using the fork. Still using the fork a little bit, uh, just do like a little bit of final sort of adjusting to get it to line up perfectly. Um, just going to put this piece on. That's clicking on really good and lining up with these pieces. See, so yeah, that's going on and lining up with those bits that are designed in the computer to sort of locate and keep everything square and where it should be, I guess, as I'm putting it together. I'm sort of skipping forward a lot of this. It's just a lot of repetitive stuff, really, just bending and tacking it all in and whatnot. So I'll get this other edge on the other side done and then we'll start looking at putting the top pieces on. But I am very happy. It's definitely coming together. Audio, well that's that side piece on. Now, the method I've been using is basically just use the clamps and the blocks and just clamp the bottom plate flat to the table and then bring the side piece in with some three mil packers underneath it and that basically gets my two corners of each piece edge to edge now one thing you do have to watch out for and pay attention is as I was going along see that little bit there that was underneath the plate 
Now, if I hadn't have actually been paying attention and just ploughed through and tacked that whole thing in, there would have been like about a two mil bump in the bottom of the chassis there, which would have been an absolute pain in the ass. So, you're getting there. It's um, that's another. Another very big section ready to put the top skin on. So now I'll just go through with a hammer and chisel, get all the excess slag and clean up the inside, vacuum it all out, and then we'll start smashing the top panels on. Alrighty, well, in light of finding that little nub while I was trying to do that last edge piece, I thought I'd get the chassis off the table, clean the table down again, which is lucky because there was another little bit stuck to the actual table. And I've just got the down on the ground and Pretty awesome. I'm pretty stoked with how this is coming up, like from the whole design process, learning that, and then we're sort of here. It's not finished, but um, yeah, sort of halfway. It's looking good. Well, that brings us to the end of yet another day. Um, pretty stoked. I really, today, wanted to get this whole middle section finished, uh, which is good. It's come up pretty nice. Not a super big fan of these middle bits here. They are fairly chunky. So, yeah, pretty stoked. It's coming up, obviously, like the render of had it to look, which is good. So now I need to get it off the table and try and extend my table as far as I can that way. Uh, pretty much use all the big long squares and blocks that I have just to try and extend the table out so that I have the full width to do the front end now. So I'll try and nut that out and we'll cut back when I'm ready to start the front. Alright, well we are at another new date. I've got a table all cleaned off, I've got the chassis spun around um, that way and now the next mission is the front area where all well, the front suspension, the engine, the power steering, sway bar, like all that jazz goes. So, this is that section and for the first hole this is the piece that I have to bend up. I believe this little section here where it steps down and comes around, that's got to follow that real sharp little bit. It's got to bend around there and that is where the engine mount actually goes. So, although the rest of the chassis looks like pretty crazy, um, it's been fairly straightforward to make so far, uh, especially this last bit where I started using the pan brake to actually bump the bends. I wish I had done that on the rear diff cradle area. Um, that could have come out better than it is. It's alright, but it definitely could have been better if I had been doing that from the start. But to this piece, you can see, so this is that engine mount area. You can see it's got a curve that way, there's a real sharp bend, and then it's got a curve around. And then the very front one, there's a lot of bends, a lot of bends happening real close to each other. 
which are going to be a challenge. I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to be able to do this in one piece. I may have to chop that bit into two, just so I can uh, get it into things and bend it. But we'll see how we go. It is steel, and it is a reason why I'm not a carpenter. So we'll get kicking on, and we'll see how this comes up. Alright, well I've been going back to the computer referring to the drawing on there and you can sort of create a flat pattern which gives you a bit of a layout. Um, it's kind of confusing to me looking at the computer trying to work it all out. But I've got the, the four main big corner bends marked out. So I'm going to bend them up on the pan brake and then the section that goes around the engine mount, I'm just going to use my little tuning fork. Uh, and I'll just use that and manually bend it, tack it as I've sort of started the back. So I'll get it bent up and then I'll get the four main bends bent up first and then we'll have a look. Right, so before putting it in the pan brake, I've just gone and manually put a, a bit of a kink in it. Um, I was almost going to put a bend with the pan brake in the centre, but then I figured that's going to be like a real sharp crease which would be hard to get out. So I've just done a nice gentle bend there. And that's basically because once I do these four bends, it's going to create a loop which will get stuck on the machine. So hopefully that should be enough of a bend. It's almost 90. So that we should be able to do all the bends and then get it out of the machine. Well, hopefully you can see there, all the joins are nice and corner to corner. It's basically why it's taken so long to get this thing together, making sure that everything's just nice and crisp. So when I was burning the weld, it goes all the way through. And that should be allow me to get like a bit of a fillet on the inside as well, you know, so it's just a nice solid weld everywhere on the chassis. So yeah, my next step now is I'm going to go through the whole underside and just run tacks everywhere on it, uh, get that sorted, and then once that's all tacked up, I'm just going to go through, weld the whole thing out, and then once all the welding's done, I'm going to go through, grind and polish everything up. So we'll cut back once that's all done. I'm not going to film it. It's just going to be what, three or four days of welding and grinding and sanding and carrying on not very interesting to watch. So we'll kick back once that's all done. Right, okay, well, quick update. Been out for, I think, about five days now. Uh, it's welding. It took about two and a half days to weld it out and then another couple of days just grinding all the welds back. So I've got put onto these got 3M Cubitron sanding discs. Tell you what, they mow the steel off. Um, quite impressive how well they work and they last really, really well as well actually. So now the bulk of the welding's done and removal and clean up, I now need to go through and just touch up everything. Oh well it'll show but see on bits like that, it's nice and crisp coming around all nice and crisp there but then little hollow spots like this there, up there um, on the top there you can see but now it's just a matter of going around with the TIG welder Touching up all those little low spots, grinding them flat so it's the whole chassis is just a nice crisp edge around everywhere. And then I'll probably put like a little one mil radius on it. 
So it's probably another, I'd say another couple of days, just going around slowly, touching it all up so it's all nice and flat and crisp and looking the business. So we'll get stuck into that and we'll cut back when she's all done. I just had a look at my phone to see the date of when the parts got delivered and it has been 23 days. 23 days I've been at this chassis. Um, it's weaker now, I've just ran out of gas for the TIG, MIG's ran out of wire, can't get any gas. Been at this the welding and grinding for about 9 days, 10 days. So called it. It's not 100% done but it is damn close and before it goes to the engineer I'm going to get it sandblasted and I've got to do a dye penetrant test on it to make sure there's no pinholes or cracks or anything so once we get to that stage I'll finish off just a little touch ups. It's, it's not much in it but I want to move forward, get all the tabs and everything on and then I'll get it sandblasted and then we can go to the engineer. So here she is. Very happy with how that's come up. I think the time I spent just doing the fit up and getting it nice and good helped. We are one step closer to getting the van going, which is pretty awesome. So on the next episode, we'll get the jig back on the table. We'll get this frame up on the table, squared away where it needs to be, and then we'll start looking at chucking all the tabs on. Pretty happy if you've made it to this part of the episode. As always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.